and welcome back once again. We continue our discussion on development and applications of special concretes. And today we'll conclude the discussion on fiber reinforced concrete that has been the mainstay of our module number six. We started this module with a special discussion or a discussion on the rheology of concrete and we started fiber reinforced concrete. Today we'll close the discussion on fiber reinforced concrete. So let's continue the discussion on fiber reinforced concrete and today we'll focus on the properties of this concrete in the hardened state, having done the properties of fresh fiber reinforced concrete in the previous discussion. So this slide is more of a recap. This picture here showing the presence of fibers in a concrete matrix with coarse aggregate. This picture is something which we are familiar with and we can imagine that in fiber reinforced concrete we'll have fibers of different lengths and diameters which are represented by the aspect ratio, the L by D, different L by Ds of different materials, whether it's steel fibers or polyethylene fibers or glass or aramid kind of fibers. These different fibers will be mixed with the concrete. And what we are looking at is the properties of concrete as it hardens with these fibers. So this picture also we had seen last time that the presence of the fibers, which are seen here, which are sticking out of a surface of concrete after it has been broken, how will they contribute? And it is their presence in the manner it is shown that affects the properties of hardened concrete. So that's what we are going to study a little bit in greater detail today. As far as the parameters that affect the properties of fiber reinforced concrete are concerned, it's on the concrete side because at the end of it, we are talking of concrete matrix on the one side and we are talking of fibers on the other and then we are talking of the interface and orientation issues. We saw from the previous discussion that if we have a concrete prism like this and we have some fibers jutting out from here, they need not all be perpendicular like this. Some of them may be embedded at angles. Some of them may have been lying on the horizontal plane along the surface which have fallen off as we tried to extract this surface and so on. So these factors are actually summarized here. On the concrete side, we have the water cement ratio, the maximum size of aggregate S by A. On the fiber side, we have the material which could be steel, glass, aramid, polyethylene, whatever it is. The shape of the fiber, we talked about it last time that it need not be smooth. There can be crimped, there can be hooked and so on. Then of course, there is the length and diameter of the fibers, which is together referred to as size here. And then we have the content issue that, okay, how much fiber is there? Is it 1%, half a percent, 2%? And these numbers are given by volume of concrete. So if when we say that we are talking of 2% fibers in the concrete, we are talking at 20 liters per cubic meter. This is the volume of fiber that we are talking about. So the content of fibers and finally the orientation and dispersion. So all these factors put together, what we have at the end of it is the properties of hardened fiber reinforced concrete. Hardened concrete, in this case, it will become fiber reinforced concrete. So moving forward, we have steel fiber reinforced concrete. It's more of a recap. The shape, size and content of steel fibers are determined according to the required strength and deformation characteristics of the steel fiber reinforced concrete. Of course, that is true for all other fibers as well. So what is being said here, we talked about this slide last time, that once we have a required strength, we can change these parameters. Given these parameters, we'll try to determine the parameters like strength and deformation characteristics and figure out whether it is acceptable to us or not. Then we have steel fibers are either mixed in the mixer with other materials or are sprayed or added at the end in an agitator truck. So fibers can be added at the time of mixing or after the mixing or are just sprayed onto the surface. So there are different ways of doing it for different applications and all of them are equally acceptable provided the engineers understand the implications of doing the fiber addition in one way or the other. As far as the shapes and sizes of fibers are concerned, we've talked about it at length. 
the length usually varies between 20 to 60 mm diameters from 0.3 to 0.9 mm which effectively means we are talking of aspect ratios between 30 and 100 but this is not a sacrosanct kind of numbers and there are smaller fibers there are larger fibers which are used depending on what we really want to have the fiber content ranges from 0.5 to 2 percent by volume which is equivalent to about 40 to 160 kgs by weight and there are different kinds of fibers which we saw in the first discussion on fiber reinforced concrete shear type cut wire machine fibers there are other uh, non-structural uses of fiber reinforced concretes for example glass fibers are sometimes used for non-structural use and of course we have applications in terms of concrete pavement shotcrete repair and some concrete products made with fiber reinforced concrete so as far as the properties are concerned let's take them up for a more detailed discussion so in the steel fiber reinforced concrete the steel fibers may be assumed to carry tensile stresses only after the cracking of the concrete phase as we have in the case of normal reinforced concrete the steel comes into play only after the flexural crack is formed so in the fibers also the tensile stress is transferred to the fibers only after the cracking of the concrete phase and thus the tensile strength of the steel fiber reinforced concrete may be taken to be the cracking or the tensile strength of the concrete matrix itself and that's what we talked about briefly last time also that unless we go towards a very high fiber content it is unlikely that we'll get a major upward revision of the tensile strength or the cracking strength of the fiber reinforced concrete having said that the post cracking behavior is what is most substantially affected so the addition of fibers may not substantially lead to the increase in compressive or tensile strength though the post cracking behavior is a completely different story that completely changes because only post cracking the fibers come into play and take more and more load Whereas flexural and bond strength and especially the toughness of steel fiber reinforced concrete increases as the fiber content increases, the compressive and tensile strengths do not considerably change with the fiber content itself. As I have been pointing out all the time, the fibers come into play only after the matrix has cracked. So the flexural and bond strength and the toughness definitely increases as we shall see in this presentation. Compressive strength of steel fiber reinforced concrete is governed basically by the water cement ratio as in the case of normal concrete. So with the addition of fibers, the workability gets reduced. For the workability in fiber reinforced concrete, we need to increase the S by A. And of course, we may also need to put some more water. This is something which we have talked about previously as well. So the compressive strength is governed by the water cement ratio as in the case of normal concrete. Improved strength, intention, flexion, and shear, improved crack resistance, ductility, and impact resistance, improved crack arresting capability, reducing crack width, and improves fatigue strength, high compressive toughness at compressive failure, high flexural toughness in bending, and high resistance to impact explosive loads. Now, these are some of the characteristics of fiber reinforced concrete, which make the material interesting for cement and concrete engineers to study and explore and try to use as far as construction of certain special types of structures is concerned as far as the fiber cement bond properties are concerned now characterizing the interfacial bond properties and fiber debonding plays an important role in defining the characteristics of fiber reinforced concrete so two analytical approaches to interpret the material properties for fiber debonding have been proposed one is a stress based criteria which basically talks of debonding of the fiber from the matrix will take place when the maximum shear stress at the interface reaches a critical value and the energy release rate criteria which says the debonding will propagate only when the energy flowing into the interface exceeds the specific resistance energy the fiber cement bond properties can be measured by a pullout test. So what we need to do is to carry out the pullout test for fibers individually. That's what will give us an understanding of the 
fiber reinforced concrete behavior for a single fiber of course when we are taking that result and taking it to the fiber reinforced concrete as a composite we have to be careful about the reliability and scalability of those kind of thoughts but that is the approach that is being suggested here the fiber cement bond properties the typical pull out stress strain plots are given here so this is fiber reinforced concrete and this is concrete and if we subject this concrete specimen or the fiber reinforced concrete specimen to the load zone like this then the moment there is a single crack formed plain concrete simply collapses so there's no way we can have any additional load carrying capacity left in it but in the case of fiber reinforced concrete there is a drop but still there is some capacity for taking additional strains and deformation so the load displacement relationship will be a linear relationship to begin with non linearity may appear just before the peak load a sudden drop of the load is experienced and is followed by gradual decrease of the load with displacement representing the fiber pull out from the matrix and by utilizing the characteristic points on the curve the interface properties can be estimated so this is the kind of approach which has been suggested in literature to study the properties of a fiber embedded in a cement matrix multiple cracking can also be noticed in high performance fiber reinforced concretes at a higher dosage level and that is what we see here that is here we have just a single crack that propagates through the system or through the specimen and the concrete is not able to sustain any more loads here in a situation like this if we are talking of multiple cracks being formed in the system or in the specimen then we can always have a high performance fiber reinforced composite where we have multiple cracking happening beyond this point and the matrix cracking happening only here at which the stresses are transferred to the fibers within the matrix after this point the load finally goes down and we can see substantial increase in the deformation capacity or the strains from here onwards we have post cracking behavior and that is what is important as far as fiber reinforced concretes are concerned the effect of fiber addition on the tensile properties this is something which is we just discussed in a slightly simplified manner incorporation of fibers into concrete improves the tensile behavior including strength toughness and failure mode and we have two basic categories that we talk about strain softening and strain hardening so in the case of low volume fiber addition say about 1% the area under the deformation curve is higher in the case of fiber reinforced concretes and a specimen is characterized by a single macro crack so what we are seeing here is normal concrete the way we discussed peak load sudden decrease and almost going to zero i must also point out that it's not easy to obtain this part of the stress strain curve it's only with specialized equipment where you are trying to do displacement control tests it is possible to get this kind of a behavior or get reliable data for this part of the curve in normal machines it's sometimes not possible when it comes to fiber reinforced concrete at say 0.5% the peak load yes it improves a little bit it may or may not improve as a matter of fact sometimes but the issue is really in terms of the increase in this area that we have compared to the area under the curve here so this is what we study a little bit more in detail and quantitatively when we try to study the characteristics of fiber reinforced concretes strain hardening is a behavior that we encounter especially at higher dosage levels the higher dosage level of fibers so if we see here the stress versus displacement kind of a graph we see that at 2% 3% 6 or 7.5% this is what the load displacement curves looked like for a particular study characterizing these 
in a schematic manner this is the kind of picture which has been presented and we have different stages 1 2 3 and 4 characterized by let's say different points a b c and d what do these points mean randomly distributed cracks start to localize and form the first major crack and this is the bend over point at point b so this is what is happening here here is the point where the matrix has cracked and this is the elastic behavior of the composite with few micro cracks a stress carried by fibers is transferred to the matrix through bond and the matrix cracks again when the stresses in the matrix exceed the tensile strength of the matrix so this is what's happening here and then in stage four we have no further matrix cracking and the load is carried by the fibers till they fail in tension or pull out or whatever happens here so this is the kind of stages in which a fiber reinforced concrete fails as far as the standardization of such tests is concerned let's look at one of the pictures this is from irc the indian road congress and what's being talked about is the behavior in bending Flexural strength and toughness in fiber reinforced concrete are most important parameters for design and quality control. The flexural behavior of fiber reinforced concrete is evaluated by the enhanced post cracking capacity expressed in terms of a set of toughness parameters that we'll just see in a minute what these toughness parameters are obtained from the load deflection curve of the third point load test. So what is shown here is the IRC setup where we have 450 mm here and 150 to 150 kind of a size of the specimen and we have the load being applied in the center here transferred to two places with these distances being equal. I would also like to draw your attention to the fact that this dimension is 150 and so is this dimension. So this does not really truly make it a beam. So if you want to call it a beam I'm leaving it to you to think as to when we can call it a beam or a truly flexural member. Let me give you a hint as to what I'm thinking about. You have seen or you have the concept of deep beams. Now, not that it is extremely relevant here, but I think it's time that you look up this concept of deep beams and try to understand what is the difference between a deep beam and a normal beam and whether this kind of a setup here would be the best setup as far as testing inflection is concerned. The answer is a yes and no and I'm not giving you the answer anyway. Having raised doubts about this method, I must also say that given that we are testing only this material and determining the properties of this material which is plain concrete or fiber reinforced concrete with a certain type of fiber of a certain geometry and so on it's pretty much all right to still use this test without getting into this discussion so this discussion is not directly relevant here but it's something which you should keep at the back of your mind and do some reading about so the larger deformations with a reasonably high stress and hence the area under the stress strain curve is larger. So we are not showing you the stress strain curve or the load deflection curve for this particular case. But we will discuss it subsequently in another slide. Continuing with the behavior in bending, the area under the load deflection curve for bending can be used as an index to estimate the energy absorption capacity or the toughness of the material. Increased toughness means improved performance in resisting fatigue, impact and impulse loading and in areas like earthquake engineering design where we expect a certain amount of absorption to happen in certain specific parts of a structure, for example, the beam column joints and so on. So improved toughness also leads to a better ductility as far as the performance of reinforced concrete members is concerned. Remember that I had discussed this with you that when we talk of reinforced concrete, the image that I have is that of a beam or a column with a single reinforcing bar or many reinforcing bars either here 
or on the top or both with shear reinforcement and so on. So this is one type of reinforced concrete. Then we talk of fiber reinforced concrete. So fiber reinforced concrete, typically the fibers do not replace this reinforcement, but change the concrete itself. So all this concrete here has fibers and we are interested to see what is the structural behavior of a concrete like this. We could very well do tests and I'm going to show you one example today where we test or where tests were carried out using normal reinforcement and using fiber reinforced concrete here. Continuing with our discussion on the bending behavior, to characterize the toughness of fiber reinforced concrete beam specimens under bending, the concept of toughness index has been proposed and the toughness index utilizes the ratio of the area under the load deflection curve of NFRC beam up to a specified deflection level to the area of the first crack or simply an area up to the specified deflection value. We'll see those things as we come in the next slide that it will become clearer. Different standards define toughness index differently. So, so far as the concept that it's the area under the load deflection curve that we are talking about is understood, then it becomes a matter of standardization as to how we will calculate that area till what point we will calculate that area and so on. See, for example, as far as ACI is concerned, the American Concrete Institute, let's look at this idealized fiber reinforced concrete beam, unreinforced matrix beam showing these kind of behavior. So the toughness index I, as far as the ACI is concerned, talks in terms of the area O a B E G divided by the area O A J. So we are talking of this area, which is a triangular kind of an area because this part from O to A is largely linear. So this is a triangular kind of an area and the ratio of this entire area here up to E. E means it is defined as a deflection of 1.9 millimeters. 1.9 millimeters and for that you have to actually see what is the geometry of the specimens that is being used. What is the size of the specimen that we are talking about and where are we measuring the deflection? Are we measuring it at the bottom? We are measuring it at the center and so on. So those details are all specified in the test method as far as ACI is concerned. So the ratio of O A B E G to the ratio of O A J is one way of defining the toughness index. Researchers, however, have proposed another definition which talks of the area of O A B F. Now O A B F, that means you go all the way. You take the complete area. You do not stop at 1.9 millimeters, you include all this as well. Now, once you do that, what is the denominator? Not the area in this linear part here, but the area under O, A, K, L. So you go all the way here to this point L here and calculate this as the base, that this is the area under the curve as far as an unreinforced matrix beam is concerned. Compare this area with the area of the entire load deflection curve of a fiber reinforced beam. So these are two of the possible ways in which the toughness index can be defined. Please remember that at the end of it, what you get from experiments is the load deflection curve. And this load deflection curve is obviously a function of, or it's very closely related to the geometry of the specimen that you're using. So once you're using a certain kind of geometry, a 1.9 millimeter deflection or whatever it is, is related to that. And once we get the load deflection curve, it's a matter of standardization as to how to go about getting what is called the toughness index. Basically, the idea being that we want to find out how much is the increase in the area under the load deflection curve with respect to unreinforced 
matrix. Continuing our discussion on similar lines, the Japan Concrete Institute defines toughness index as an area at the load mid span deflection curve up to a value of 1 by 50 of the span. Now, if you're talking of 1 by 50 of the span and you're talking of the span to be 450 mm, if you're talking of 450 mm span, that was the span that I showed you in the IRC specimen. So, if it's 150th of that multiplied by 1 by 150, we are talking of a deflection of 3 millimeters. So, what we know is that here we have the area under this curve for fiber reinforced beam up to a delta of 150 that is span by 150. So this area is what we consider as the total toughness. Remember that as far as ACI is concerned they were not talking of the toughness they were talking of a toughness index. And this area under the curve was kind of normalized with respect to the area under the curve for an unreinforced specimen or unreinforced material. Here in GCI, we are talking of the toughness itself and we talk of the area under the curve till a deflection of L by 150. These are some of the better known diagrams that we have as far as the GCI is concerned. And we can see that we can talk in terms of compressive tensile and flexural strengths. And as far as the load deflection curves are concerned, for this load deflection curve that we have, we have the total toughness, the toughness ratio, the equivalent flexural strength, and the residual flexural strength ratio, which can be determined. And they are all defined here in these diagrams. And the deformation characteristics are being measured using these parameters. So in this case, we have the total toughness at a certain level of deformation. The JCI says L by 150, ACI says 1.9 mm and so on. So we can talk in terms of total toughness as defined here. We can talk in terms of a toughness ratio, which can be this area here, which is E divided by P max times delta naught, which is this whole value. That is one way of looking at it that we don't use a comparison with the unreinforced material, but we rather create this area here, P max times delta naught, and compare how much is E. Coming to equivalent flexural strength, we try to determine that area E dash, which is here, and divided by delta naught. So we have this divided by delta naught will give us some value here, which will be called or which can be called the equivalent flexural strength. We have the residual flexural strength ratio, which is P naught upon P max, which is a cyclical loading situation where we take it up to P max, go back to the next time, cycle at P zero and so on, and we try to find out what is P zero by P max. Then we try to define a parameter called the residual flexural strength. So there are different ways at which researchers have tried to use or characterize fiber reinforced concrete kind of composites and they are all available in literature and have been used as far as design is concerned. As far as toughness is concerned, once again, there are different studies that we have. Here is a situation where the toughness or the load deflection curves have been plotted for different fiber volumes, 0, 0.5, 1, 1 and a half and 2. And we can see that how we can interpret the kind of discussion that we had just now in the previous slide in terms of the area E and compare it with the toughness ratio and so on and so forth. This is the load deflection curves observed for different volumes of fibers. We can have a similar study with different fibers and we can find that this is SF1, SF2, SF3, SF4, and SF5. And depending on the fiber that we use, the load versus deflection curves could be very, very different. This picture here shows how steel fiber reinforced concrete beams have been tested to failure. If we look at this beam, 
it shows a failure which is in shear this is a propagation of the crack whereas the same beam cast with steel fiber reinforced concrete with a certain amount of reinforcement here which is not shown the structural behavior changes and we see a flexural behavior and in this case the steel fiber reinforced concrete shows its strength in terms of resisting the growth of these large shear cracks so in rc beams do not fail by shear even when shear reinforcements are not used so there is enough shear strength in this portion here which helps us obtain or get some kind of flexural failure it is when we are testing beams of this size or this nature then we come to realize as to what is the importance of this ratio which is sometimes called the a by d ratio so now i'm leaving it to you to just think about what an a by d ratio is and how it is relevant from the point of your flexural behavior of beams and in terms of the deep beams that we talked about this is a pointer in that direction we have the maximum moment versus a by d curve here so if the a by d was plotted on this axis and the moment was plotted in this axis we find that there is some kind of a minimum that is seen here especially for plane beams and then beyond this point the moment capacities are something here they increase meaning thereby that as far as beam behavior is concerned as far as real beam behavior is concerned it requires a certain minimum a by d to be able to talk in terms of flexural behavior or proper flexural behavior without the shear becoming a major player in the game we are not opening this discussion in a bigger way than that except to note that steel fiber reinforced concrete has high shear capacity compared to plain concrete and this is what has pushed this values somewhere here that we do not see any pronounced shear failures so we do not see any large reduction in the moment at an a by d of two and a half this picture here shows us the idealization of the stress strain curve and the load carrying mechanism of beams for the stress variation across the depth of a plain concrete beam we are familiar with this diagram this is the reinforcement this is the steel strain this is the strain in concrete and then we neglect the stresses being carried by the concrete here and we concentrate only on the stresses in steel on the compression side of course we have this available to us and finally we try to come to a position something like this where we say that okay whether it is linear or it's not linear some kind of a stress block develops with a certain centroid the kind of force that happens here this force and this force being equal then there is this moment arm and we get the moment capacity this is how we do normal plain concrete beam analysis when it comes to fiber reinforced concrete the major change is somewhere here that for this particular strain distribution there is a certain amount of stress being carried by the fiber reinforced concrete also which is something which we neglected in plain concrete so this becomes my strain distribution on the tensile side of the beam compression side whatever changes happen they happen and finally we create a more complicated model as far as the force equilibrium is concerned and we create or determine the moment capacity of the section so this kind of a thought process goes on when we try to design flexural members with steel fiber reinforced concrete or any fiber reinforced concrete beam for that matter so the steel fiber reinforced concrete has higher tensile capacity compared to plain concrete and these tensile stresses in the steel fiber reinforced concrete in the tension zone can be considered now in normal concrete we simply ignore them once again to reiterate the properties of fiber reinforced concrete are largely in terms of improved strength in tension flexure and shear improved crack resistance ductility and impact resistance high crack arresting capability reduces the crack width and improves fatigue strength 
and the high compressive strength at fatigue failure, high flexural toughness in bending and high resistance to impact explosive loads are some of the characteristics of the fiber reinforced concretes. As far as applications of this material is concerned, there are several of them. Pavements, tunnel linings, where we have a reduced thickness. Tunnel lining in case of concrete without reinforcing bars by increasing the fiber content, we can get very interesting results here. Increasing the concrete's resistance to freezing and thawing, thereby increasing its durability and increasing the shear capacity of the members. As far as the application is concerned, shortcrete is an interesting example where short fibers are more workable but less effective in reinforcing the concrete. And that's what I had said that when we say that the short fibers should not be used in concrete because they are less effective, it's not that they cannot be used at all, only their effect will be lesser. So in certain cases, if you are willing to live with that, for shortcrete could be an example where short fibers are more workable they contribute less to the reduction in the workability that we have, but they help us effectively increase the strength of concrete to some extent at least. Short fibers of 20 mm or less permit easy spraying and are ideal for applications such as shortcrete. And the nominal length and aspect ratios of steel fibers between 20 and 60 mm, between 30 and 80 respectively. So this is something which we have to keep reading and understanding with the pinch of salt and try to study the different applications on a case to case basis and then try to choose whether we want to use the fiber reinforced concrete or not. With that we come to an end of our discussion today on the properties of hardened fiber reinforced concrete. This is a set of suggested reading and reference material and continuing with that we have another set of reading material but at the end of it like I said the other day the list is incomplete and I would be happy and expect you to actually read not only this but also a lot of other more recent material. What we've done here is try to use some fundamental material which was developed not so recently but there have been recent developments based on this material which will probably help you understand the properties of fiber reinforced concrete better. So with this, we come to an end of our discussion as far as this material is concerned. And as far as something to think about is concerned, here are some of the assignments that you could do. And I'm sure if you do some reading on your own, there'll be so many other things that you will learn and you'll be able to contribute to the understanding of the material. Thank you once again. I thank all my teachers, friends and colleagues who helped me understand this material especially Ranjan Viratne, whose PhD thesis I have referred to in my presentations extensively today. And I look forward to seeing you once again in the next module. So with this lecture, we come to an end of module six. And now I'll see you in module seven, where we'll talk about some other interesting aspects of the development and applications of special concretes. Thank you.